started in Niue, where I was young. Fortunately, I was in quite a creative family, like, but more musical. Um, but they always encouraged us to kind of play around. And I remember, you know, um, my grandfather had a shop, and whenever he'd bring near, you know, hardware or whiteware, he'd have these big cardboard boxes lined everywhere, and we'd all dig in and draw these giant pictures and just have fun. I came over here for some form, and you know, the art teachers there were kind of you know, kind of picked me out and said, maybe this is something you could pursue in the future and um, just started giving me information and books and it was real eye-opening, really, because, you know, uh, where I came from, we didn't have anything in terms of art history and stuff to see, Renaissance and modern art. It was, it was kind of blown away, really, um, and I just wanted to try it. I just wanted to replicate it, you know, and I tried painting like and I say try trying is the operative word here <laughs> um, you know uh, but that's that's what you do you you try to replicate and then you kind of find your own passion but that just seeing the scale you know like the Sistine Chapel and all these paintings and and to read about it and to also understand that it took more than one person as well you know that it's a, a group effort um, I think that was one of the things I took where took from when I went to art school was that you know, this is a real thing. Um, people appreciate it. It's not just something pretty on the wall. I was always raised to think that it was, had to be kind of functional to have a purpose, but for people to believe in it and as a platform to, you know, to send a message out or tell a story or share how you feel, evoke something from the audience. It just, these are just different it's a different way of thinking about art that I had never been introduced to and I just kind of ran with it and tried everything. So the name of the show or the title of the show is Native Practitioner. Um, and the idea around that kind of culminated in the painting behind me, which is the dinner bell. So my grandfather um, was one of the first uh, Nguyen's, indigenous Nguyen's that traveled overseas, went to Fiji and studied to be a doctor at the Fiji School of Medicine. And then when he came back to Nguyen, um, his title, title that was given to him was native practitioner instead of a doctor, um, the powers that be. Just didn't want to give him that title for obvious reasons. And he fought for that title. And there were others as well in the community on the island that fought for the title. But he did especially because he was like, you know, if I'm a doctor and I can't get the title of doctor, what chance does a teacher or a nurse or a janitor or anything like that have of getting recognition for their work that they do, you know? And um, he got a lot of pushback, obviously. Um, but also, you know, from the community as well, the local community as a not to, don't rock the boat. You know, it was a just self-preservation kind of thing, but he, he fought for that title. At the time, the High Commissioner of Niue, uh, Hector Larson, was quite a cruel man. Um, one of his, you know, he used to throw people in prison for, you know, just minor things. It's just things that you just want to think about, holding hands or, you know, just showing affection, anything, any reason he would. And one of his favorite pastimes was when he was getting drunk in the evenings, he would rock up to the local prison and he would crack a golf ball into the bush. And the, and the prisoners would have to find that golf ball. And if nobody found the ball, nobody would eat. And so the reasoning behind that painting is that um, people like my grandfather, and I only talk about him because he's my connection to the story, but there are others, but people like him who are fighting for just you know, humanity and respect and in your own country are doing this whilst having that kind of hanging over your head, like this this could potentially happen to you or your people you love, yeah. One of the larger pieces in the show, um, Petals Adrift, well, that came about when I was thinking about uh, climate change and how it affects our people. And I'm not just talking about New Orleans, but our, our Pacific people. And, um, you know, which is, you know, people talk about climate change like it's this thing that, you know, we all have to be worried about and, and which we should be. 
but I, you know, I'm still very much in touch with my home and, and I, you know, I talk to my parents and friends and family and you, you, you hear the effects that it's having on them. Um, the rising water, the more recurring kind of storm weather patterns that are happening in the Pacific and more so the rising of the waters that are lapping at the homes of our people um, all across the Pacific. And I thought, you know, what, what kind of, how could I portray that in a way that makes it not only an urgent issue, but a present issue. And I thought, and that, that's where I came up with the petals. So you have the symbol, the siale, the frangipani, which you see everywhere as a Pacific kind of iconography. And I wanted to use that as, because they're supposed to represent, you know, the four pillars of our culture, you know, your family, your tradition, your language, your culture, uh, religion. And I wanted those petals to be drifting apart as in the water is rising and those, those petals are being replaced by canoes or waka or boats and they're drifting apart and the people are scrambling onto them. So, you know, are you a people if you don't have a land? That's, and, and how does the culture survive with that? I mean, obviously it's not gonna happen as quickly as that, but it, I, I felt it needed that kind of scale, that immediate kind of, you know, jarring kind of, because it is kind of, it's quite difficult to take in, I think, as you know, you really need to step back from it. Um, I think the ways that I tried to make it relevant to today was to use things like the iPhone as well. He's one of the figures that's holding the iPhone. And I wanted to use the colors from Google Earth. So I've got the green and the blue there. Um, and then the figures are in a kind of sunset yellowy red as in, you know, the sun is setting on these people. This is just my ways of trying to make it that it's not some sort of old kind of Renaissance painting, that it's something that's happening now, something that's relevant now. But that's what I was trying to come across with that painting. I did want them to be paintings that sat on their own as well, but they all the ideas for each of them came up across as one body of art. So they all kind of speak to each other in their own way, but they're not directly linked. You know, they're just kind of touching on, leading on to the other, um, which I hope helps make it more of a cohesive show or more piece of body of work. This is called Smoke Signals, or the big cow, as everyone kind of calls it. <laughs> um, it's supposed to be a plume of smoke or pollution that's rising up from the continents of the Asians and the Americas. Not saying that's where it's all coming from, it's just Locale-wise, we are situated between them, so they are technically our largest border. Or thing. And the plume of smoke is supposed to be rising above us, covering the Pacific, and it's creating, I wanted to create this kind of sense of heat rising up. And, and you know, it's more like kind of a snapshot where there's, you know, there's elements of, of deforestation for monoculture and the raising of, of cattle and, and Methane glasses, and, and then in the middle is, is again uh, the people, our people, struggling to pull each other up. But there's also little little hints and nods here. There's a hand reaching out to one of the continents as to say, I mean, it's up to you how you want to interpret it. It could be that, you know, we need your help, or pointing out as well, you know, this could happen to you. I mean, people don't really care about things until it happens to them, really. Um, and I'm just, and that kind of led on to pedals, and that's how those are connected. And that's, yeah. These are kind of snapshots of different areas that I'm working in right now, but they kind of meld together for the show. But I'd like to go in depth in a few different sections. Um, funny enough, my first love is carving. <laughs> you know, I, I love carving, I love working with wood, but I also love drawing. So maybe if I could kind of combine the two, maybe, or, I mean, just because I'm a painter, you know, is that the best way to push this board? You know, it has to be, it has to be what the, the narrative has to drive. And if it happens to go that way, I'll give it a go. Who knows? <laughs>